The Red Sox biggest trade piece at this year's deadline could be getting ready to make a big impact. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin. I think we're all in agreement here that probably the biggest piece that the Red Sox picked up at this year's deadline is someone that isn't even helping this team right now, and that is the addition of Quinn Priester, who the Red Sox thought had a really high ceiling, and he does. He has a lot of potential. The thing was, he just needed to tweak his plan a little bit. Well, he has been tweaking that plan, and recently he had his best start yet, which could lead down a road of actually making an impact in 2024. So what we we are going to do in today's video is we're going to break down this latest start with Quinn Priester himself, talk about what he's been working on down in Worcester, and ultimately talk about what this could mean for the 2024 Red Sox. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. When Quinn Priester was traded to the Boston Red Sox right around this year's trade deadline, the Red Sox pretty immediately laid out a plan in front of him. The plan with Quinn Priester was to increase the velocity on his fastball and his sinker and increase the vertical movement of his off-speed pitches. That's something that was a bit new to Quinn. Coming over from the Pirates organization, the Pirates were having him focus specifically on his slider as more of a horizontal pitch. They wanted that pitch to play off of a cutter. With the Red Sox, they've sort of changed that a little bit. It. They still want that horizontal movement, but they also want to focus on, on that vertical movement as well, making it easier to play off of his sinker. And for Quinn, that obviously came with a bit of a learning curve because his first start in AAA with this new plan didn't exactly go super well. He ended up going two and third innings. He allowed eight earned runs while walking four and striking out four. But since then, he's started to adapt to the Red Sox plan, and it's been working out pretty well with improvements coming each time he's been on the mound. His second start was four innings, three earned runs with one walk in four Ks. And this was actually a pretty solid start. He simply got bit by a three-run home run off of Brett Beatty. Outside of that, he was really dominant against the New York Mets AAA team. However, his last start was his best outing yet in a Red Sox uniform. It was actually really fantastic. He went five innings. He allowed just two hits, no earned runs. He struck out one and all of it on just 42 pitches. But more importantly, he was getting swing and misses on his stuff. There were six swing and misses in the outing, two on each of his sinker, slider, and changeup. The big reason for Quinn's biggest, best performance yet from Quinn himself was that increase in velocity. He talked after the game, and his quote here is that, I think if you look at the result today as if it's any indication that velocity helps, and it certainly does, so I'm going to keep doing that and going to keep getting better. And we actually got the chance to talk to Quinn Priester about this start, about his improvements to his velocity and the movement of his slider, along with some other things as well. So let's talk to Quinn about what went well in this start and how he can kind of replicate that going forward. All right, so we're here with, I would say newly acquired, but you've been here for a little bit now. Quinn Priester, uh, how, obviously, how's your uh, first impressions been of the Red Sox, the organization, city? Yeah, it's all been awesome. Uh, you know, teammates, coaching staff, you know, everything down here in Worcester is is great and uh, you know we've added some new guys we've lost some guys um, you know I'm one of those new guys too so just trying to build relationships and and learn as much as I can and uh, you know get ready to uh, get back to helping at the major league level yeah for sure and uh, so you came in here they pretty quickly you know came out with a plan for you and last night was uh, I mean a fantastic start from your end you mentioned that velocity was a big part of your start last night mm -hmm. going forward is that sort of the main focus here yeah that is the main focus, you know, if we can go out there and, and, and you know, be consistent at, like what we did last night in terms of the velocity, you know, a lot of those other things take care of itself and I think we found something really good, you know, last week that, that translated really well into last night's game and now uh, it's a matter of just doing it over and over again, getting, you know, extremely comfortable with it, Not because last night it was very comfortable. Um, but just keep getting you know those reps and keep creating that second nature feel and and then go from there. And so, what goes into increasing the velocity? Is it as simple as I'm just going to throw the ball harder? Is it more mechanical? Yeah, a little more mechanical on this from this time around. Sometimes it is just the mentality thing where you just go up and rip it, and it's 
you know, hey, let's see how hard I can throw it. And there's definitely, you know, a lot of those in, in the game last night. Um, but on top of that, it's also, uh, you know, some mechanical stuff, staying tighter to the body, being able to rotate faster, um, and just learning, you know, some things about, about myself that I hadn't seen before thanks to, you know, the organization and the staff here. And, and then being able to talk with guys, you know, like Fitz, Keller, and, uh, you know, Jason, I mean, all of our starters, Penrod, all of our pitchers have been, you know, really good and really, you know, welcoming, you know, in these first couple weeks. And then, um, so you've sort of been in the big leagues before, obviously, but you never pitched at Fenway Park. Is there something you're looking forward to about pitching there? Just pitching there, man, <laughs> like having the big league jersey on and Pitching at the oldest ballpark in the world, right? Or, yeah. or oldest ballpark in the United States. And God, we'll we'll even, say the world. Yeah. Make it look sound a little better. <laughs> even it, well, I can't imagine baseball would be anywhere else, so it probably is the world. Anyway. Really good point. But, um, yeah, I mean, that, the history there, the – the amount of games there and and then also one of the things like right when I got traded was like thinking about those you know Boston you know New York Boston Red Sox Yankees games you know arguably the the greatest rivalry in all of sports like being able to you know be able to have a part in that and part in you know winning those would be is going to be awesome and, yeah. and that's one of the things that I kind of have circled is playing the Yankees and and being able to have success doing it. Yeah, man, I can't wait for you to face the Yankees, yeah. actually. Uh, speaking of Red Sox Yankees, Pedro Martinez or Roger Clemens? I like Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> I like listening to him a lot. Oh, like he just, He's a fun, entertaining guy and, and obviously still speaks about the game and, and comments a lot about what's going on. And, you know, like when I go home, I like to separate myself from baseball, but the, but the clips and, and the things I see of him, uh, you know, he's awesome. And then, you know, whenever you see like the highlights of, of Pedro Martinez, you kind of stop what you're doing and watch. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah. And then would you rather have a, oh, let Jesse yeah. get off the guy's yeah. side. Would you rather have a 20 strikeout game or throw a complete game, no, uh, complete game shutout under 90 pitches? 20 strikeouts. Yeah, that's pretty Way easy. Way cooler. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, complete game is awesome. Um, but 20 strikeouts would be pretty cooler. sweet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> would you rather the best fastball in baseball or the best off speed? Off speed, is that one pitch or is it multiple? <laughs> uh, we'll give you multiple. We'll say multiple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It kind of switches a little bit, but we'll give but it to the you. Heat, uh, but then you go, the heater makes everything else play good. So. Yeah, Paul Steen's heater with your uh, sweep would be pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, man. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you so yeah. much. Appreciate thank it. You. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption, folks, but I just wanted to take a second and say if you're enjoying this video, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it's the best way you can let me know you're enjoying the content we are putting out. Thank you all very much for taking a second and doing so. Let's get into the second part of this video. First and foremost, as always, a huge thank you to Quinn Priester. This dude is the absolute man. Such a fun guy to talk to. And I think a big reason for that is because you could tell just simply how passionate he is about, one, being in this organization, and two, his art on the mound, his ability to actually pitch against batters. And I think that's something that's going to be really important for Quinn as he continues to develop for this Red Sox team because I think people forget just how young he is. He's just 23 years old, and the MLB experience he has is isn't successful, but it's also really easily changeable. It is something that he can adapt to. And I think having that mindset going into a new organization is really important on his road to really developing into a true impact player at the major league level. And speaking of impact, what does this all mean for the Boston Red Sox? Well, right now it doesn't mean a whole lot, but in the grand scheme of the season, it could end up meaning a whole lot. Because if for those of you who do not know, in 10 days on September 1st, rosters expand, meaning the Red Sox can add two more players to their big league team and obviously their biggest need right now is pitching they need arms at the big league level this gives them the opportunity to bring up at least one more arm and I think in my opinion Quinn Priester is a prime candidate to be that arm Quinn Priester should be starting a game either today or tomorrow for the Worcester Woo Sox that also gives him the opportunity to get two more starts in before September call-ups if Quinn Priester can continue to maintain his approach this approach approach that he found successful in his latest start, I think he could be a really 
interesting candidate for the Red Sox to bring up, mostly because we know what Quinn Priestley's ceiling could be. We're talking about a possible mid-rotation arm for the Boston Red Sox, getting into a pattern, limiting hard contact, limiting pitches throughout a outing, and being able to get swing and misses on all of his pitches could be a deadly combination that makes him successful in Major League Baseball. If it develops into a pattern, I would firmly believe that Quinn Priester will be up here for the September baseball the Red Sox need to play. And what this could do for this Red Sox team is basically totally change the landscape of this rotation. You have a fresh new arm in this rotation to give you some innings, some really important innings, hopefully down the stretch here. And that could offer obviously have a massive impact, but even outside of just simply being able to give the Red Sox innings, having Quinn Priester in this rotation also allows the Boston Red Sox to put a guy like Cooper Criswell or even more drastically Nick Pavetta into the bullpen. This lengthens the bullpen by lengthening the rotation. You are impacting this team in its worst position right now, which is that pitching staff in all facets if you are able to get Quinn on the right path and get him up here. Now, obviously, that's going to take Quinn Quinn being able to replicate what he was doing in his last start over his next couple of starts. And I do think that's totally possible. I think it's absolutely likely, honestly, that Quinn's able to do this. And the reason for that is because he understood what made his start so successful. And he understands how he's going to have to continue to do that to continue improving at the AAA level, right? He knows that, hey, my velocity, that's what's working for me in AAA. If I can continue to do that, I'm going to see good results results on the mounts and he understands how to get there. He talked about the mechanic usage. He talked about the mindset he needs to have on the mound to be able to throw the way he is throwing. So I have full confidence that this could actually be a turning point for Quinn Priester. And if, even if we want to look beyond 2024, this is a really, really big step for a guy like Quinn, who's projected to be a pretty major factor for this Red Sox team. Even if he doesn't get up here in 2024, what we're talking about in 2025 and beyond is is the potential of a mid-rotation guy who's able to go a decent amount of innings. Maybe he's not a huge strikeout guy at the major league level, but he's going to be able to limit hard contact and give the Red Sox something that they just didn't have this year, and that is consistency on the mound. And look, I understand that he hasn't been successful in major league baseball yet. I understand a lot of people have written this guy off already, but man, that potential that Quinn Priester has right now could be an absolutely massive impact for this Red Sox team. And that's why we've titled the video the what it's titled today. I don't know if he gets up here for September, but I think he's absolutely a name to keep your eye on as we get closer to that MLB roster expansion date. And if he does get up here, I have faith that he's going to be a real impact on this Red Sox team and someone who helps them push towards a playoff spot. But that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think about all this? What do you think about Quinn's approach? What do you think about his mindset? And what do you think it could mean for the Red Sox in 2024? Let me know all your thoughts on this latest topic in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Just helps these videos out a ton. It's the best way to let me know you're enjoying the content. Don't forget, if you want to listen instead of watch these episodes, all you got to do is head over to your favorite podcasting app and look up Red Sea Radio. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. A huge thank you to Quinn Priester for being in this one, and I will see you you all in the red seats.